With one of the best universities in the world, Cambridge is home to a few scientists. Now they have a few more. Zeiss's new centre is not only home to the people responsible for the UK side of their sports optics such as our rifle scopes and binos, but those involved in things like high-tech microscopy, providing kit for the next winner of a Nobel Prize for Medicine, or lithography optics for those clever chaps who make microchips. One special guest invited to celebrate the opening of this building is Ray Mears. He's been lighting fires, carving canoes and building shelters across the world for British TV pleasure for years. He says his life and that of others is enriched by good optics. You have to say that the two greatest inventions have been the microscope and the binocular. I mean, they're, they're, they're astonishing what they enable us to see and understand, and I think that's the key. The, the greater the magnification, the greater the understanding. I think that, that's, a, that's almost a rule of nature. It's, it should be one of you know, the Newton's laws, really. And I think you can see that very clearly when you use uh, a binocular. A binocular enables you to locate things, to identify things, but it can sometimes be difficult to see what's really going on. But if you then put up a field scope, a spotting scope, and you, you then, having located the thing, you look in more detail, now you see what's going on. You see the, uh, the nuance, the emotion on the face of the creature that you're watching. You see more clearly what's happening. So your perception of nature improves with Im improved you know, optical performance. For hunters, of course, you know, who are having to make life or death decisions which have uh, a bearing on the population dynamics of an animal they might be managing, um, having good optics that work in low light is very important to make the right decision because that can be very difficult. So is there any one wildlife moment which stands out for him that would otherwise have gone unseen if it weren't for his ever-present binoculars? On a daily basis you see more detail, but I think one of the most fascinating things that I was able to see was um, we were filming a, the nest of a goshawk, and the goshawk was away from the nest and a blue tit was coming up and pinching little bits of down for its own nest. It was taking quite a risk. It's those sorts of details that otherwise you wouldn't see. So, you know, when you take the, you have to take the time to use the optic. I think that's the other thing. You have to, you know, plonk your back against the tree and, and, and breathe in the environment. The more you see, you, you're tying those pictures that your, 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 your optic nerves are recording to the sounds that your ears are recording. So your, your perception of what's going on through your auditory system is also improving because, you know, in, in the forest where things are camouflaged, with experience of recorded in the brain, you, you see with your ears and you hear with your eyes. Even though Ray likes his Zeiss binos and probably gets a free pair, that's not how these relationships work. Zeiss also wants feedback from their experts in the field. They're professionals and they won't use anything that they don't believe in. I mean, it, it's part of their professional working life. So have people like Ray is, is really added benefit to ourselves. And, and we also get feedback from these people. I mean, they're, they're using it as a tool. And if there's something that needs to improve, we can talk to them and, and we put our ideas forward to Germany. So, yeah, people like Ray Mears and, and other opinion leaders, yeah, their views are, are certainly important to us. The new Zeiss Centre should mean even better customer service. If you want help with Zeiss products, or you fancy buying a very expensive microscope to go with your Bunsen burner, or maybe even a planetarium, this is where to come. But this evening isn't all about lab coats. There are a few of the UK's great unwashed sporting journos too who are told to behave themselves, and definitely no touching.